Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to your JavaScript series. This video, again, is not about JavaScript exactly, it's about CSS. That's because it's also an essential ingredient for web development, so I just want to give you what you need to know to start working with it. Now, by the end of this video, you're not going to be an expert, like me, of course, but we are going to go through some of the key essential things you should know about CSS. Now, if you want to be a really good developer, then you should probably check out our sponsor. Are you looking for a JavaScript web development bootcamp? What about an iOS bootcamp? DevMountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real world applications and get a job in the industry through DevMountain's career centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, DevMountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. Now when it comes to CSS, this is something that you link to your HTML file. Now you can have internal CSS, which you put directly in your HTML file, but it's usually recommended to have an external style sheet. So by external, I mean external to this page. We're actually going to create a new file, which will be its own CSS file. So how do you do that? I don't know, let me look it up. So all you have to do is in the head, put link and then say rel equals style sheet. And then we're going to give it an href, which is the file location. And we'll just go with stylesheet.css. Now our JavaScript is actually in a separate folder. You could do that if you would like. To do that, just go in here and say CSS, put a slash, and then inside of our folders, we can click new folder, CSS, inside of there, create a new file, call it stylesheet.css. Just to make sure it's working, you can put an asterisk and then curly braces. And then inside of these curly braces, what you can do is just say background color and set that equal to red, like so. Doing a refresh, wow, look at that. All right, so you see we have this asterisk. This is an example of a selector. Now, if you want a good list of selectors, I recommend the best source on the internet, W3Schools. So you can find that here, CSS selector reference. And you can see we did this one here, which selects all elements. So basically everything in the entire page was selected and we changed the background color to red. Now you can grab other things using all these series of selectors. I'm not gonna go over all of these because uh, honestly, I just don't want to. So once you select a selector, you can choose properties and values. So what we did, our property was background color and the value was red. What are the other possibilities for the properties though? Well, going back, we can see this really good reference here, which is the CSS reference, and here is a list of all of the properties. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get a, a more specific selector. So to do that, we can grab an element. In this case, it's giving an example of the P tag, so it'll grab all the paragraphs, but we could actually use a different element. So let's try an example of that. We can go up here on a new line and say button, and inside of the button, we can give it a different background color just to see the difference. Blue. Doing a refresh, look at that. This is modern web development. So this is kind of odd. If you read this from line to line, you can see we set the button's background color to blue, and then we say we grab everything and set the background color to red. So you know, wouldn't this change the button's color to red? Not exactly. Basically, there's a layer of rules in CSS defining which ones get applied and which ones get ignored. This concept is known as specificity. <laughs> Specificity, I think I got it right. Yeah, so this is known as specificity. Specificity, how do you say this? Specificity, yes. And you can see this is zero, 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 hovering over button, we got zero, zero, one, so that's at least a little better. Basically, the way the order goes is inline CSS happens first. So if inside of index.html, you go in here and you say body style equals background color, green that's going to be applied over all others doing a refresh you can see we get the green here for the body so i'm going to get rid of this go back to style sheet then the most specific thing will be applied so talking to the button is more specific than talking to everything so that's the one that's going to be applied and then if you happen to have the same specificity twice then the latest one is going to be applied so if down here we set something else Let's say we change the background color to green yellow and we're going to also set the border. So we can say border and we'll say yellow dotted. Doing a refresh, check this out. It's yellow and we got that dotted background. 
So this one was overridden and this one replaced it. Now check this out. If we took this one up here, cut that and pasted it down here, here's what's gonna happen. The entire section for this button is not going to be overwritten, only the background color. So when we do a refresh, you can see we still have that dotted border. So it doesn't override everything from the first button, just that specific style background color. And if for some reason a particular property value is extremely important and you don't want anything to override it, you can do that. So for example, we want this green yellow to not be overridden. We can just say important prefix with the exclamation mark. It's kind of confusing because in other programming languages, the exclamation mark means not so it's kind of like it's saying not important but in css that's not exactly what it's saying it's actually just saying this is important and you just prefix it with the exclamation mark because that is the syntax for it now what you're probably going to do a lot of the time is grab things by class and id so looking back at the cs selectors reference you can see we can grab classes and we can grab ids classes are prefixed with a dot ids are prefixed with the uh, pound sign so check this out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of our CSS cause it's, it's pretty ugly. Go back into the HTML and I want to create like a simple list. So inside of the body, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an OL, an ordered list. And inside of here, we're gonna have some list items. So we'll have home, contact. And just to warn you guys, this isn't gonna be like an amazing website. <laughs> and then we'll have an about us. So doing a refresh, this is what we got. Beautiful. Now I want to assign some classes and I want to assign some IDs and talk about the difference. So a class, you can assign this to numerous things. So we'll go in here, we'll say this is the class border and we'll also put that on this one here. So we'll say class is border and we can style both of these together by referencing this class. So going into the CSS, it might look something like this, dot border. We put the dot because it's a class and then we can give it a border five pixels orange solid beautiful wow this is stunning now the id is a little bit different because that's only going to be used for one thing so we could actually put it on something that already has a class we just say id and we can just call it special since it's the only one inside of the style we can grab that using the pound sign so we can say special and we'll just make the color oh my golly claire you're emailing me now seriously it's like seven in the morning we'll just make the color green doing a refresh wow look at that green text all right cool now the other thing you should probably know is that working with the css you can do it pretty easily by inspecting the the page and going in here and dorking with the styles down here now for some reason i, I can't resize my windows i'll just close this one out uh, let's inspect this about us and that's going to open where where that is and what we can do is we can test our CSS here so for example we could set a margin and we'll set that to 30 pixels and you can see that changes stuff we can also set a padding of 10 pixels and that changes stuff none of this is going to persist so the the actual file stays the same looking back at our code you can see nothing changes here so this doesn't actually save it's just for experimenting, but it's cool because you can go in here and you can you can increase the numbers by using the arrow keys. It's pretty cool. So margin determines how much space is outside of an element from the other elements. So this right here, this area. Padding is on the inside and determines how much space the stuff inside of it has. So if we increase the padding, you can see the space between the about us and the border increases. There we go. Now the contact and the about us is pretty separated. They're probably pretty sad because they're all concerned about their spacing. They're probably gonna make a movie, the space between us or something stupid. So we're just going to decrease these and you can actually just turn them off if you just wanna go back to normal. That way you can see the difference. Now obviously that was a pretty terrible CSS introduction, but you know, that's the kind of quality content I create. Nothing more than you would expect. So what you need to do now is if you want to master CSS, you need to focus on that separately. Now this is a JavaScript series, so what you need to do is you need to worry about the CSS later and just focus on getting your JavaScript down. Don't get too sidetracked. I just wanted to give you the basics, but if you want some other stuff to study, I would look up pixels versus EM versus percentages. Um, also important selectors and properties, how to style lists, 
how to style links, how to dynamically size pages, and how to do scaling and all that good stuff. Now, it wouldn't be a JavaScript series if I didn't tell you at least something about JavaScript. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back and change some JavaScript stuff. So we're gonna change some of the style on our button that we created. Um, my button's kind of a long name, so you could just call it my butt for short. So what we'll do is say my button dot style, and then we can set a particular style by putting its name. So for example, background color, and we can set it to red. Doing a refresh, look at that. We just styled our button. Cool, so that's the basics of CSS and working with it inside of JavaScript. You can make things dynamic with JavaScript. So for example, inside of a click handler, you could change the style, doing a refresh. Clicking it doesn't work because it's disabled, so we will just comment that line out. Doing a refresh, click it, and it turns green. So that's how you can do some dynamic JavaScript stuff. You know, when you click a button, maybe it goes gray and turns disabled, and so forth. So what we could do is do that by cutting this and pasting it here. Maybe you want to activate something and it starts red, you click it, it turns green, and now we can't turn it off. Yeah, so that's some good stuff. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to be talking about the DOM. Peace out, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget to subscribe.